ECG findings. Persons with Brugada pattern findings on a surface ECG have some form of a pseudo right bundle branch block and persistent ST segment elevation in the leads V1 to V2. Here's the 12 lead electrocardiogram of the Brugada pattern. In this ECG, you can note the presence of a pseudo right bundle branch block and persistent ST segment elevation in the leads V1 and V2. There are two types of Brugada syndrome, type 1 and type 2. While three different patterns of ST elevation were initially described and were used in clinical practice for years, subsequent consensus is that there are actually two distinct patterns of ST elevation. In the type 1 Brugada ECG pattern, the elevated ST segment descends with an upward convexity to an inverted T wave. This is referred to as a curved type Brugada pattern. The name itself makes sense as to why it is called curved type Brugada pattern. It is so called because there is an upward convexity. In the type 2 Brugada ECG pattern, which is combined from the original designation of type 2 and type 3 patterns, the ST segment has a saddleback ST T wave configuration in which the elevated ST segment descends downwards the baseline, then rises again to an upright or a biphasic T wave, giving the characteristic appearance of a saddleback. Patterns of ST abnormalities in the leads V1 to V3 in Brugada syndrome. The J wave amplitude is at least 2 or more millimeters as seen with type 1 Brugada syndrome and the same goes with type 2 Brugada syndrome. There's a T wave inversion in type 1 whereas a positive or a biphasic T wave is seen with type 2. The ST to T configuration is a classic curve type in type 1 and a classic saddleback type in type 2. The terminal portion of the ST segment gradually descends in type 1 whereas the terminal portion of the ST segment is slightly elevated to at least about 1 mm or more as seen with type 2 Brugada syndrome. ECG patterns of Brugada syndrome in the leads V1 and V2. The image here in the panel A is typically a curved pattern type 1 Brugada syndrome which can be seen in V1 and V2. In this type, at the end of the QRS, an ascending and quick slope with a high takeoff of at least about 2 mm or more, followed by a sharp concave or rectilinear down sloping of the ST can be noted. There are few cases of coved pattern with a high takeoff between 1 and 2 mm. There are no clear R prime waves, the high takeoff often does not correspond with a J point. At 40 milliseconds of high takeoff, the decrease in amplitude of ST is less than or equal to 4 millimeters. In right bundle branch block and athletes, it is much, much higher. That's how they're differentiated. ST is followed by a negative and symmetric T wave. The duration of the QRS is longer than in right bundle branch block and there is a mismatch between the V1 and V6. The panel B of the image shows a typical saddleback pattern seen in type 2 of the Brugada syndrome in the chest leads V1 and V2. Note that there is high takeoff of the R prime that often does not coincide with the J point and is at least 2 millimeters or more. The descending arm of the R prime coincides with the beginning of the ST the minimum ST ascent is at least half millimeter or more. The ST is followed by a positive T wave in V2 and a variable morphology in V1. The characteristics of the triangle formed by the R prime allow to define the different criteria useful for diagnosis. This angle is termed the beta angle. The duration of the base of the triangle of R prime at 5 millimeters from the takeoff greater than 3.5 millimeters. The duration of the QRS is longer in the Brugada pattern type 2 than in other cases with the R prime in V1 
and there is a mismatch between V1 and V6. Diagnosis Both Brugada pattern ECG findings and clinical features are required to make the diagnosis as Brugada syndrome would not be diagnosed in the setting of ventricular arrhythmias and or sudden cardiac death in the absence of the typical Brugada pattern ECG manifestations. Conversely, the appearance of a typical ECG changes alone without other clinical manifestations is considered to represent the Brugada ECG pattern but not the Brugada syndrome. For a patient with type 1 Brugada pattern ECG findings who is otherwise asymptomatic, clinical findings which would support the diagnosis of Brugada syndrome include the presence of first degree AV block and left axis deviation on the ECG, atrial fibrillation, late potentials seen on signal averaged ECGs, fragmented QRS complex, ST to T wave alternance with spontaneous ventricular premature beats in a left bundle branch blocker pattern on prolonged ECG recording, ventricular refractory period less than 200 milliseconds, and the HV interval more than 60 milliseconds during invasive electrophysiology study. And finally, absence of a structural heart disease including myocardial ischemia. Here's an algorithm for evaluation of a patient with suspected Brugada syndrome. A positive ECG, positive symptoms, and a family history all point towards Brugada syndrome needs to be evaluated for underlying heart disease with imaging and stress test. If the evaluation with imaging and stress test comes out positive, alternative diagnosis should be made and should be evaluated and treated accordingly. If none of it has come out to be positive, then the ECG must be reviewed. If the ECG shows type 1 Brugada pattern with symptoms, a diagnosis of Brugada syndrome is made and is treated accordingly. If a type 2 pattern is noted on the ECG, the patient must be challenged with certain pharmacological therapies. If that comes out to be positive, a diagnosis of Brugada syndrome is made and is treated accordingly. And if it comes out to be negative, an alternative diagnosis should be evaluated for and treated accordingly. Treatment Treatment for patients diagnosed with Brugada syndrome is primarily focused around prevention of a sudden cardiac death and the termination of any ventricular tachyarrhythmias with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator or ICD. Fever should be promptly treated with antipyretic agents and patients should avoid medications known to increase the risk of ventricular arrhythmias in patients with Brugada pattern ECG. Quinidine and amiodarone are most effective and are the two antiarrhythmic options for the treatment of ventricular tachyarrhythmias in patients with Brugada syndrome who have recurrent arrhythmias resulting in ICD shocks or for patients who are not candidates for or refuse to have an ICD implantation. For patients with the Brugada ECG pattern who are otherwise asymptomatic and have none of the criteria that would suggest Brugada syndrome like no family history of sudden cardiac death or a type 1 Brugada ECG pattern, clinicians recommend no treatment in such patients. The consensus recommendations for implantable cardioverter defibrillators in patients diagnosed with Brugada syndrome. If the patient has a prior cardiac arrest or a sustained ventricular tachycardia, an ICD must be recommended and they fall under the class 1. If they do not have a history of cardiac arrest or if there is no sustained ventricular tachycardia, an evaluation must be made if the patient has spontaneous type 1 ECG pattern and history of syncope judged to be caused by ventricular arrhythmias. If the patient does respond to such a history and the ECG does show type 1 ECG pattern of Brugada syndrome, then an ICD can be useful in such patients and they are to be classified under class 2A. If not, then an evaluation must be made if ventricular fibrillations can be induced on an EP study.
In such a case, they can be classified under the class type 2B. And in such patients, ICD can still be considered. If ventricular fibrillations cannot be established on an EP study, or if an EP study cannot be performed in such patients, an evaluation must be made if they are asymptomatic with drug-induced type 1 ECG, and if there is a family history of sudden cardiac deaths. To such patients, an ICD is not indicated and they are classified under class 3. That concludes our video on the Long QT Syndrome, Brugada Syndrome. We hope that you liked our video and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you for watching.